Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to your best TV show, PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, he's a footballer, an attacking midfielder, a right winger. He's played for the national team, the Black Stars. He's also featured in the local teams, Accra Great Olympics, Accra Hearts of Folk. He's been featured internationally. Look, if you're a football fan, if you're a football fanatic, you should know that Lai Kingston needs no introduction. Well, he's my guest tonight on PM Personality Profile. Sabato, <laughs> thanks for your time. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for having me, Aisha. Um, I'm doing great. Do you still play football? Um, no, um, I hung my boot uh, back in 2013. Uh, at the moment, I'm a coach now, okay. uh, trying to pass on to everything that uh, I learned through my football days uh -huh. to the up-and-coming uh, footballers. Okay, so the last time you played was in 2013? 2013. Uh, with the national team? Uh, with the national team, it was in 2011. Okay. But as, as in, I'm getting my boots, mm. finally, it was in 2013. Wow. So since you, you hung your boots, you've been doing this coaching thing. What else have you been doing? Um, you know, immediately I hung my boots. Uh, I, I tried to stay away from football for some time, but the love for the football is huge. So uh, I still wanted to be close to football. Uh, that's why I, I went back in, into coaching and mm. so far so good I've been enjoying it till now. And now that you're coaching, do you respect your coaches now? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, before I, I do give so much respect for my coaches. Uh, you know, in, in, along the line, you know, you, you also know that uh, you can be in school, but not all uh, teachers that will teach you <laughs> that you enjoy. Okay. Same as footballers. Definitely. You know, and, and it's it's very key thing for uh, a coach to make sure your players will enjoy you. Back in the days when I was playing, I like coaches that will make me enjoy it because it's fun. If I'm, if I'm having fun, that's what brings the best out of me. Mm -hmm. So all those things have uh, helped me to understand how the players think. Mm. And now into coaching and I see the difficult part and everything, how should I approach each and every player individually? Uh, for me to send good message for the players. Mm. Back then in 2006, when yourself and uh, Godwin Atram, I think, you were not allowed to go for the World Cup. Um, maybe because the coach didn't believe <laughs> that you would qualify or something. I mean, what really happened? Um, for, me, for me, I think uh, it's rather unfortunate, you know, because uh, I was in my prime. Uh, I did so much for the, for the Black Stars, you know, as a, as, a, as a Ghanaian, as every Ghanaian would do. You know, I had the opportunity to join the Black Stars and I gave everything out for the country. You know. mm -hmm. uh, I make sure every game that I feature with the Black Stars, I give 110%. What happened was in the 2006 Nations Cup, uh, I had an encounter with uh, one Senegalese player, which happened to be, to be, both of us got recorded and then we have to be sent off. <laughs> and then uh, the, I was banned for like three matches, so I have to miss like three matches in first three games in the in in, 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 in the World Cup. Mm. So I, that's why uh, the coach doesn't believe I, Ghana will qualify to the next round. And then it happened to be that I'm not part of the squad. Mm. But it's something that uh, uh, affects me in my career because every player's dream is to play in the World Cup. Definitely. Uh, and s looking at it, uh, all the contribution and everything that I contributed to the uh, to the country and I couldn't make it to the World Cup I think it's uh, it's a, such a very big blow mm. uh, fast forward uh, 2010 was something that uh, uh, I think knocked me out okay <laughs> because in 2006 I was still young I still believe I still have World Cup in front ahead of me mm. 2010 for me myself I, I believe and I've made my mind that that will be my last tournament for the national team. Okay. Because I was aging and I realized that uh, I don't have energy to play club football and, 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 and international football as well. So I, I wanted to focus more on my club football that will enable me to give my best because okay. you can't cheat nature. So yeah. I was growing. So my mind was like last tournament. After that, I'm hanging my boot in the, with the national team. And, and I focus wanted on my to give football, out my best. My best in the, in, in the club level. But it happened to be like me going out of the team again. Mm. So two times back to back World Cup, I missed both. You know, but the 2010 <laughs> was the, the knockout one. Uh, My goodness. It, it really, it really went gone me very well. Mm. And also 
during that time I was like run, my contract was running out of with the uh, arts of Medlothian. Okay. They offered me a contract, but their budget is very low. They want to uh, split my salary into half. And, and I told them they should hold on because I believe after World Cup, I have one good game in the World Cup, I can uh, get a better offer. Mm. And, 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 and I, I was dropped from the national team. My goodness. You know, I missed the World <laughs> Cup as well. I have to go back and then fight for the uh, contract. Even I wanted to take the half and then prove myself again in the league and then find myself uh, a better deal. But uh, that's life, you know. We all learn from, from, from things that happen on our way. Mm. Uh, it hurt me so much, but mm. I, I thank God that I stood back on my feet and I'm still enjoying life and, you know, I'm still around football. Why not? You never know. Maybe in future, I might lead one of the teams in the country to win World Cup. Mm. So. But, but psychologically, it really affected you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, psychologically, I was really affect affected. You know, I, I remember going back to my team and I have to stay indoors for like a week. Oh, you know, the coach, the coach realized that. And the coach called me and said to me, Kingston, you can have time off, for yourself. shake it off, and then uh, come back looking come strong. Back. And, and thank God for my wife as well. My wife was there for me. Uh, uh, eventually, when I left the team in Paris, go back to Edinburgh. Everywhere I go, my wife has to follow me. <laughs> you know, I go upstairs, she's there with me. You know, everywhere I go, she has to follow me. She, she realized I might do something, you know. Yeah. And there are so many things going through my mind. Uh, but hey, I, it, I thank God that I went over it and here yeah, I right. But um, in between 2006 and 2010, 2008 AFCON, you got injured. Doctor says you are injured, and you told the doctor, you are, "No, you don't have an injury." Why were you doing that? You, you know, I, I, I really felt I have to be part of the squad that will win something for the country. You really didn't care about the injury. Um, yeah, that's that's why uh, you, when you are fighting for your country, you should also make sure you put your body on the line. Okay. You know, because I know, I know we've all worked hard together, and I know tournament being played in the home soil in front of Ghanaians will be something extraordinary mm. you know and and I'm, I'm, I was really lucky to to make it to the final 23 men that feature for for Ghana in that tournament I remember okay. I was unlucky throughout that year I remember like two weeks before we we report to national camp we report to uh, preparation for the tourna main tournament I had a game I scored against Rangers had a very good game and then we're doing recovery a day before the match and I had I torn my ligament in my ankle goodness so so I did MRI and then I have to stay out for like eight weeks mm -hmm. so which means I have to I have to miss the tournament so immediately when the invitation came in to my club mm -hmm. my club mm -hmm. told the FA that this is what has happened I'm out of the tournament and 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 I remember the management of the FA said, okay, fine, we know, they, they, they showed the scan and everything, but the coach, Claude Roy said, and the FA management said, okay, bring, bring him to the camp in Dubai, Abu Dhabi pre, to be precise. Okay. Bring him to camp, and then we assess him, our doctor will assess him as well. When I went to the camp, I couldn't train for like two weeks. Okay. But the coach and the management were in support. They gave me some French uh, physio who was taking me through treatment and trust me within two weeks I could run on my feet okay and you went in there and scored you remember I, I remember coming in uh, into my fa our first game on tour and then I had a very good game and I made it to the to the first starting lineup in the first game of the tour mm. so which means I'm qualified to to, to start the tournament itself okay. and I couldn't feel anything again I wow. doctor said I have to go eight weeks I started running I started shooting and the pain just went off you know so that's that's mental toughness yep. you know sometimes you need it in, in your career sometimes mm. you need there's a barrier but you can push it to the limit and make sure you make it wow. so before the tournament started in Ghana I was fit wow. I was okay I was enjoying and then again I had injury during the tournament Again, again, probably because you didn't treat the first one well. <laughs> I was okay. The first one was fine, but this time I torn, I, I broke my bone on my foot. Oh goodness! Yeah, uh, 
there was a ball between myself and uh, John Mensah. Okay. So I was going to kick the ball and then it, it was trying to block shot. So I hit the under, under of his foot. Then that's, that was when I broke my bone. Mm. So uh, as a midfielder or a right winger, what, what really is your, is your job on the field? Um, everyone is different on the pitch. If maybe if they put a different player in my position because of the quality, different qualities that he have, we we'll approach it in a different way. All over the world, we need we know players on the wide areas have to be very quick, but my style on the line is different. Mm. I'm not a quick player, mm. but very smart on the ball, precision on the ball, uh, very good passer, mm. uh, a vision. So I use all these qualities that I have. And then and then and then play that position, that right wing, in a different way, okay. which I believe Ghanaians embrace that. Mm -hmm. You know, because former players that I I inherit that position, they are very quick. Talking of uh, uh, someone like Yao Preku, it's very fast. Uh, mention mention names. Uh, all the all the players that have played number seven for the Black Stars are very quick. They okay. like to run. They want to run. They want to when they get the ball. When they get the ball, they want to put the ball in behind you and run. Yep. But for me, I made the ball, make the running more than me. Okay. You know, very smart. Uh, uh, I don't know why. Maybe I was a typical midfielder. That's what helped me to be very smart on the ball, on the wide areas, okay. uh, decision making in passing. Mm. Mm. And sometimes I join attack as well. I make runs in the box and find very positive spots in the box that will enable me to have a very easy finish. So okay. I managed to score some goals. I think I had like seven goals out of 42, 45, three matches for the Black Stars, mm. which for me, uh, in my position, I think it's a, it's a credit for, me, for my position. Interesting. Let's talk about how this whole football thing started. Um, I was born and bred in Buko, Jamestown. Oh, wow. Yes, my dad is from Teshi. Okay. But I, my mom is from Jamestown. Uh -huh. I grew up in Jamestown. I was born in Jamestown, grew up in Jamestown, mm. between Oshafort and James, Jamesfort. Okay. Uh, there's a place called uh, Ishogono. Okay close to the sea. That's mm. where I grew up. Mm. But I normally play along the coast, go to um, uh, Nungwa, go play Teshi, Tema during that time. Uh, so that's actually what happened. How come I started uh, my football career? Okay. We started on the street when I was six years, you know, which uh, every child will do. Okay. You know, pick ball, play on the street until a guy saw me and said, oh, I think you can be a very good player. Oh, that's wow. when he took me to uh, me and you babies. Mm. That time we trained at um, fire service, Accra fire service, mm. the training uh, school. That's where we trained. I played there for some time. I was playing in the youth, youth 14s and then U 17s at the same time. Okay. And then from there, that's when Kowling Babies came on and Kowling Babies was one of the best coach mm. teams in, in Ghana, okay. to be precise. Mm. And that year they tried to scout all the best players in the, in the league. So they bought me from me and new babies to Kowling babies. Mm. That's when I met Godwin Atram, I met Aziz Ansan, I met Dankwe, Oseb Wati. Okay. So we had a very good team. That year we were unbeaten. Mm. We represent Great Accra in, um, in Kumasi okay. and we won the cup. Wow. That's how come I was selected to national under 15. Oh, okay. Then we were camped in Winneba. Mm -hmm. So through there, we stayed there for two years and then uh, Olympic one year and then the Olympics came for us, all of us. Mm. So that's when we, we started playing in the Ghana Premier League. I played in, in the Accra Great Olympics, went to National Under 17. I played in the Youth uh, African Youth Championship mm. in Botswana. Okay. Won bronze medal. Wow. Uh, and then in the World Cup in Egypt, won silver. Okay. Finals against Brazil. Mm. We were leading 1-0, two minutes to finish the game and then Ronaldinho. Okay. Made this magic, you know. <laughs> it's called two goals. They scored two goals in the final minute, and then we lost the cup. Yes. I, I won myself a, a, a silver medal, mm. and then I graduated to the U twenties. Mm. U twenties, I was lucky to win gold. Wow. In 1999, we play in Ghana. Ghana hosted it and then won it. Playing in Ghana, the final against Nigeria. You know, we we all know the rivalry between Nigeria. It was <laughs> a full house, and then I was the one who scored the only goal in the final as well. So, oh, goodness. Uh, for me, throughout my career, that was the best tournament I've ever featured in. Oh, and, wow. And we won. And then in the, World, in the World Cup in Nigeria, we were 
we were quarter finalists. We, were, we went out uh, uh, against Spain mm -hmm. on penalties. Mm -hmm. And then the Olympic team, we, we were unlucky to qualify to the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, I moved to the Black Stars. And okay. then Black Stars, everything started happening in the Black Stars. Oh, yeah. But of course, uh, you made a stop at Accra Great Olympics and then Accra Hearts of Oak. I mean, what was the experience like, and at what stages were you in those teams? Yeah, so um, before we joined Accra Great Olympics, mm -hmm. it was Accra of Folk that myself and Gordina Trump came for us. Okay. Uh, we were close to sign for Accra House of Folk. It, and, then, and then I was like, that time Accra House of Folk have like men, and they have all the best players in the league in Ghana at that moment, so I was thinking it would be very tough for us as young up-and-coming players, if you go to Accra House of Folk, it would be very difficult to have a playing time. So I told Atram, <coughs> Olympics, we have a chance of playing in Olympics, so having a playing game time in Olympics, so the best place for us is to go to Olympics. That's how come we find ourselves in okay. Olympics. Mm. And Adekoka did very well, brought in some young players and then gave us the opportunity to show what we can do in the league. Mm -hmm. And that, that time we, we did well in the league. Uh, so, so for me, I think it's, it's the best choice for all of us. Uh, myself, Atram, Aziz Ansan, Dan Kwe, Christopher Pelete, Oseb Boati, all these young players who came into the league. People think we cannot do it. But that year we did well. We placed, yeah. like, uh, on, we were in top four in that, that year. So, and all the top teams in the league, we gave them a very good game. Okay. You know, I remember we beating Gophers. That time, Gophers were like on top. They've won the league back to back. Okay. Uh, they're doing well in, uh, in Africa as well. And, uh, and we managed to beat them at, at a cross post stadium. So, so for me, I think it's, it's quite a very good choice for all of us to, 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 to join Olympics. Yeah. That's what gave us the opportunity to have play time and then show what we can do. That's when uh, Arts of Folk to came in. But before Arts of Folk came in, Olympics transferred me to Libya, but the tournament was, the, the, the contract wasn't successful. Okay. Uh, I have to run away, run away from the contract <laughs> because <laughs> the punishment was too much. Okay, tell you me know? about it. <laughs> so, so a country, it's not easy. You know? <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. That's why you like uh, that Kofi Kinata. Kofi Kinata, well. yeah. Oh, you get the opportunity <laughs> to sing it for me. But what, what were those um, challenges you're talking about? Yeah, um, I, I signed a contract, uh, El Etifak, in, uh, in, uh, in Israel. No, sorry, in Libya. In Libya. Mm -hmm. And I signed three years um, contract, my salary, and everything for six months i did not get anything wow and i was playing for them oh so so yeah. i went to ghana embassy see the consulate and then i was lucky that the counselor at that time to libya in the u20 world cup <coughs> he was part of the leader of delegations that took us to the world cup okay so he helped me a lot to to bring me down to ghana i came to ghana i left my itc so the six months, did they pay you or no, they didn't pay? nothing. Pay? But what? for me, really? for me, all I want is to like come back to Ghana, start relaunch my career. Okay. Because I realize that place will not help me, okay. and I want to play football to the to the top. Okay. So I, all I want is to come out of the contract, get my ITC back, mm. and continue my career. Mm. I'm not thinking about the money. Okay. It's, it's, it's a lot of money, but. I know <laughs> if I started playing, <laughs> I will make more than what I'm okay. chasing over there. Okay. So, so I, I came to Ghana, my ITC is stuck over there. So I need someone that will help me to bring the ITC back. I went back to Olympics. Olympics was the one who put me there. Okay. So I went there for them to help me so get, get the back. ITC back. They, they, it, they, it looks they, they were not interested to do that. To do that for you. So I stayed for like a month and then I went to Accra Suffolk Training Grounds. I went to training um, in 2000. So when I got to training, when I got to training, they were, you know, Fridays. That time, at of Oak, Fridays, they would just open 11 aside and play. Okay. And that time, they just took a few, he coached me in the Olympics already, so he know the strength and everything that I have. Okay. He put me in the game, and that training, I have a very good <laughs> training. So after the training, the supporters put pressure on Ariza Ko, uh, Tomi Okai, now Nia Ibonte, uh, Alajias, put 
and the Thompson put pressure on them that hey, we need lie in the team. So then Dennis Thompson said, okay, was well, the way forward. So I told them the story and Dennis Thompson said, okay, he will help me get the ITC back. So thumbs up to Accra so folk. I always say that Dennis uh, uh, Thompson and us management, they did very well, you know, in bringing my, Dennis Thompson put in to FIFA and then he came <coughs> back that I have to stay one year without football. Okay. Before GFA can issue a provisional certificate for me to, Okay. To, to play with. Okay. So as of folk, let me stay. I was training with them. I go to international tournaments with them. I remember going to a tournament uh, in South Africa with them. Uh, but still, they were paying me. I don't have contract with them, but they pay me for one year. Wow. Sometimes they win matches, they give me bonuses. Wow. So I was unlucky. If my ITC was in, I would be part of the squad that won the Champions League oh, with them wow. in 2000. Wow. I was training with them. But because my ITC is not here, I cannot play. Let, let's zoom in into your days uh, with the Black Stars. What was your relationship with um, your colleague players, your coach? How would you describe those moments? Family. There was a family? Yes. Okay. That's the word. I'm putting it in one word. Family. Okay. You know, at that time, my time with the national team, the senior Black Stars, was amazing. For me, for me, not only myself, most of my teammates, anytime there is a national call-up, we were, we were eager to come together. So do it. We were eager to come together. We love each other off the pitch as well. That's mm. the, that, that, that was the sources. The spirit. That was the key to the, to, to the sources. Mm. You know, because we love each other. You know, we have very good relationship. And I know most people keep saying that uh, we have this quartet in the in the middle of the national team in my time mm. myself steven apia isien muntari one of the best midfielders in our time in, in in that time okay in africa at that time mm. you know because we love each other you know myself and steven apia we grew up together in the same area we grew up in choco i grew up in jamestown okay. and we've known each other since we were like nine ten years old mm. So we we bonded like even off the pitch. Okay. Sule Muntari and ACN2 Slightete made them bond them together. Okay. So they've lived together, they lived in the same house at Dansoma, mm. playing for liberty. Okay. So they have that relationship as well. Okay. It I can see in, in even in the game on the pitch. I can see we talk to each other when I'm tired. I can tell Steven is tired in the middle. He can tell me, hey, go in the middle, let me stay wide a little bit. You know, we, we help Take each other on the pitch. So okay. we have that. Connection. Co connection okay. between us and mm. the management of the national team realize it okay. so they, they work around it very well mm. they realize the key moment for me i think one of the best management we had as well okay. we, we also have relationship with the management as well okay. so so it's not like boss and boy okay. it's like friends okay you know Nyantichi, Nyantichi was there Nyantichi, we i can pick a phone call Nyantichi. Nyantichi can call me we we have a chat uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Papse, Fred Papu okay. is there. Awanya Champon, uh, Randy Abbey, mm -hmm. all those people we have relationship. You really you know? had fun. Yeah, so at that time. when we're traveling, we all on the same flight, we all on the same uh, uh, level on the flight, mm -hmm. enjoying the flight. Okay. Sometimes after games, you know, we go out, have fun together, and all that. So, so we have that relationship. That's mm -hmm. the key. Keyword, you know, we like family. Um, I remember when Asamwanjan missed that penalty. You remember what happened to him? You know, football put people together, and that's why sometimes people follow it with their hearts, their everything. So that particular moment, if you missed a chance, I, I bet you <laughs> all the people who love you will become your enemies. <laughs> yeah, we, you what know, would you describe as your own awkward moment? Yeah, for me, I, I will. I will put 2006 Nations Cup, Ghana, Senegal. Okay, that was your awkward moment. Yeah, because that's, for me, I think I did not do anything to be shown, shown the red a record card. and also have that band as well. Okay, uh, because, that really got yeah, you. Yeah, that really, that really got me. For me, I think I was in the verge of going to the world cup first time qualifying the country to the world cup oh. going there to show what i can show the world what i can do <laughs> but and that, that dream moment, was shut late, was shut late so. uh, but of course um you you've talked about going to libya but i know you also went to russia yeah. you went to the u.s and yeah. other places tell yeah. me about the experience there 
Yeah. Um, so, so after I came back to us, I played one year, one season with them, won the championship with them. And then the following year, I had the opportunity to go to Israel. So I went to Israel. Um, the team that wanted to sign me, uh, Maccabi Aki Nazareth, mm. the coach that brought me in, left. Okay. He signed me on and then he left. Okay. So after he left, the coach that came in called me to his office and told me, I don't want you in the team. Goodness <laughs> me. Yeah. So, so immediately he said that. I said, okay, no problem. I was a little bit down. Yes. Because I was looking forward to play be. outside Ghana. Definitely. You know, have a taste of proper professional, not mm -hmm. the one in mm -hmm. Libya. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, Israel, they are more professional. Okay. So I was looking forward to it, and then that happened. And my manager told me, don't worry. Drive to leave, pack your things. From because Israel. the team have already given me car, and accommodation, everything. everything. He said to me, okay, no problem. Pack your things in the car, drive the car down to Tel Aviv. Mm. The, the rental company will come and take their car back. Okay. So I drove to Tel Aviv. First time driving from Nazareth to Tel Aviv. It's, wow. around, it's about three hours drive. Okay. You know, so uh, I'm only focused on road signs, Tel Aviv. So I see Tel Aviv. <laughs> <bam>. <laughs> then he took me to one of the best clubs in, in Israel, Apoel okay. Tel Aviv. Mm. They have top, top, top players. My first training session, the coach said, I want this player. Okay. They gave me the contract. So, wow. so, so from, from maybe low club, Akina Saret is low, going to, coming to big city, you see Tel Aviv. what God did for you. Tel Aviv and then <laughs> signing for one of the best clubs in the country as wow. well. It was, was a huge uh, achievement for me. Okay. I had a very good season with mm -hmm. them. And then um, a club from Russia came for me, mm -hmm. Krilia Sovetov. Mm -hmm. They came for me, and also uh, it was it was the agent that have relationship with the coach in that club. So, so they invited me to Russia. I got to Russia, and I have to stay in the hotel for like two weeks without training. Okay. Because because the coach have seen my highlights, okay. but when he saw me in person, he said I'm too small for the Russian league. <laughs> My size is too small. I should go back. So sizes also play in football. Yeah, we recruitment. Some coaches like the every coach is different. Some coaches like players that have body. Take tall. Yeah, some coaches too only focus on the qualities that you have. What, what do they do? They scare people on the field. I don't know. Everyone have his own belief. Every coach have his own belief and the qualities that he need. So, so he stayed in for two weeks without I stayed training. In for two weeks without training and. <laughs> And my agent did not tell me anything. I kept asking him. So all I do is come down for breakfast, take some apple, some few things, go in, push up. I do only call. Mm. Because I don't know when they will call me. Okay. So not knowing behind the scenes, they were argument. You, you just give him a try. Okay. Give him a try. Give him a try. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it was, it, was, it was very frustrating for me, but I was patient. I knew what this is the wanted. time. You know? Okay. I know I've... I've played in Israel. I want something, a stepping stone mm. to, in my career. Yeah. So, so I realized Russia will be that step. Okay. So I made everything possible that I have to sign there and then make sure I prove in Russia as well. Okay. After two weeks, then the agent called me that there is a game that I have to go and play. Mm. I've not trained with the team. Okay. So the president and the, and, the, and the coach was like, okay, let's bring him on. Let, let's play this game. Let's see. Interesting. In our main stadium. Okay. So they gave me that opportunity. After first half, I had a very good first half. First half, president walked in the dressing room and told um, the coach, change Kingston. Change him. Change me. So in my mind, I thought, uh, I'm playing well. You why, know, all the players were tapping that? me. You know, you know, players, they are very smart. Mm -hmm. When you come in and you're a good player, you can see them showing you your teeth. Okay. But if you are rubbish, they would, ah, they would, they would, they would <laughs> rubbish. So yeah. once you were seeing them showing their teeth, you, you knew realize, you were oh, there. Uh, I've been accepted. You okay. Know? And that's the most important thing. Yeah. People that you work with, if they accept you, that's a key point for you. So, so when he said they should change you? I was, I was really disappointed. So I was, then, then after 10 minutes, a guy came to me and said to me, come downstairs with me. So I changed. I'm sure at that time you my shower, beat. My, uh, Then, <laughs> then I, I went down, I saw Mercedes Benz park at the parking lot. Then they said, see that, they opened the door and I saw nice, Nice, cute, huge Russian guy sitting at the back. 
It happened to be the president of the club. Oh, wow. Took me to the office and gave me the contract. So, oh, wow. So change him yeah. really meant that... If seen, if seen what you have to see already. So they yeah. should... They should. Oh, they should goodness. Sign me on. So, so you had the contract. Yeah, and then, and then I went in the middle of the season. I helped the team to, def to place third in the league, first time behind uh, Lokomotiv and then CSK Moscow. Mm. That, that was the best position they've ever been, Krila Soveto. Wow. So in Samara, I was one of the heroes in Samara at that okay. time. So uh, after that, I had interest in all the big teams in Russia. Mm. All the big teams in Russia. But okay. I said to myself, I've been accepted here. I don't want to be in a rush. I want one more season okay. with Krilia. I had one more season and I had very good season as well. Mm. So every year, the president would tell me, give me three good games. I'll change your contract for you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So every month I put my body on the line all the time. Okay. Put my body on the line all the I'm time. I'm sure at that time the girls too would, would be following uh, you. No, not really. I'm, I'm a family man. You know, already. <laughs> I, I don't want trouble. That's why I got married very early. I don't want trouble. So I don't, you, you were even noticing them, even if no, they were coming your way? Not at all. You know, when you get to a certain level, you know, you have attention from everywhere. But the most important thing, you should make sure you focus, you should be focused. Uh, on what you are doing. You mm -hmm. know? So uh, at what point did you play in the U.S.? Um, U.S. was when I was even coming to the end of my career. Okay. U.S. was after I moved from Russia to Israel, no, from Russia to uh, Scotland, from Scotland to Holland, Holland uh, to, yeah, after Holland, that's when I, I, I went to Israel, okay. to uh, ML, USL, yeah. Mm. Like Kingston, and I can't take a break because I'm enjoying the conversation so much. He is my guest on PM Personality Profile. You can call him Sabato as well, <laughs> and he will respond. When I return from this break, he grew up in Jamestown. We are going to get into his skin proper because he's going to tell us how growing up in Jamestown looked like, what impact it had on his life career. And also remember, he grew up in a very big family. Olele is his brother. He'll be telling us a little about, it looks like the family is a football family. We'll be learning more about his family. And also talk about, has it been football, football, football? What else for Lai Kingston? All of that, after this break, do stay with me. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, Lai King Singh, he's uh, telling me a lot about his football career and I'm having fun on this interview. Um, Sabato, let's talk about your growing up in Jamestown. I know you grew up from, I mean, a big family. You had how many siblings? Um, together will be, myself will be like 21. 21 from yeah. one mother and father? No, okay. five, five mothers. Five mothers. Yeah. Your My father is a killer. Yeah, <laughs> he's a legend. Okay, <laughs> so and, and five he, women. Yeah, five women. He, he played for Accra Suffolk before moving to okay. Accra Great Olympics so as well. So he was a footballer? He was a goalkeeper as well. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, played in the Olympic team as well. That explains it. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the blood. So, so it looks like that time all the girls were all over it. <laughs> That's why I asked you whether all the mm. girls do were all over you. Uh, no, 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 I'm not like my. You're not like I'm your not father. Like my father. I'm married to one with four children. So know. how many from your mother? Uh, my mother had seven kids. Seven. Seven, and uh, my mother's side, I'm the third one. Oh wow! I have a sister, brother, and me, and myself. Okay. Yeah. So between you and Olele, you you are the eldest. No, Olele is the eldest. Oh, Olele is the eldest. Uh, this is the uh, Olele's mother. Is the first one. Okay. My mom is the second one. Okay. Then we have one at Ufanko. Okay. We have one at Labadi. Okay. <laughs> we have <Wow>. one <laughs> Teshi. You know? I so, see. So yeah. how was growing up like? I mean, Jamestown boy, and I know the you had Inshona. So mm -hmm. you used to go to Inshona. Oh yeah, I grew up there actually. You know, I I grew up close to the beach, and that's where we go and play. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if, if I'm in my house, I can see the ocean. Okay. You know, so uh, every morning we all go to the beach and then 
uh, also small, you know, you find some small fish, help the fishermen after they put their canoe to shore, mm. then we help them to uh, pull some ropes and after that they'll give us some small fish. Okay. Then we go and sometimes, uh, especially when it's like uh, August, f like Omoho, that time, that's when they get fish a lot. Yeah. So we have something called kete. Mm -hmm. So that, that one you go wake up midnight, so all the fishermen will, will come midnight. They go early, they go in the evening around 5 and okay. then come back midnight. Okay. So the fish is there, so they bring a lot plenty of fish. fish. Yeah, plenty of fish. Mm. That's when we go and then also there's small, get something small okay. uh, in, in our pockets. But it, it wasn't easy at all. A lot of bullying and all that. <laughs> you know, I th for me, I think that's what prepared me to face the world. Mm. You know, because uh, uh, where I grew up, if you are not strong, if you are not tough, you, you'll be bullied all the time. All the time. All the time you'll be bullied. Wow. That's, that's the mentality of... Of the of, of the people over there, <laughs> uh, so so that's why sometimes people f think I'm very aggressive, but not aggressive. You know? <laughs> I, have, I have to defend myself. Definitely. You know? yeah. uh, tell me about your school days. I mean, how was school like growing up? Yeah, um, you know, my my mom really pushed us to go to school. Mm. Um, that time, my grandmother was uh, have a bar, local bar, mm. uh, at Peteshi Bar. That okay. is called uh, Kradaso, okay. and it's famous around that area at that time. Mm. You know? So, so my mom made sure he put us all my siblings in, in, in school. So we, we attended Amazing Grace International School okay. uh, in Kolegon. But but that time among my siblings, I, I don't like school. I have to be very honest. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I, I don't like school. I, I, my focus is football. You know, <laughs> I want to go and play football. So. So anytime, I always want to sit at a window. <laughs> so know? that I can run so away. So that I can jump and then go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you will receive a lot of beating. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember one time we were, we were going, that time we, we get all gather around St. Pei. Okay. And then the uh, school bus will come and pick all of us. I remember because I don't want to go to school, that time there was this moon changing going on somewhere that I want to go and play. Okay. And if I go to school, I will miss that game. <laughs> And I want to go and play that game. So, so I was holding my bag. So we were driving. The moment we got to the the Koliana, okay, like threw my bag out of the <laughs> of the trotro. You didn't even mind where it would land. Yeah, yeah, I just throw it away. I don't have anything, so <laughs> I have to go down and then pick it. That's what allow, enable me to run away. You know, that was the strategy that time. <laughs> and so you were able to go and play. Yeah, so that I will, I will be able to go and play. And then we got to a point that. Our team masters will come to the to the school because I, I happen to play for the school team as well. And some of the teachers like me because I'm playing. Come and then ask permission. So they'll take me, I'll go and play and come without my parents' knowledge. <laughs> but if my parents get to know, the teachers will be in trouble. <laughs> my dad doesn't want us to play football. Okay. My mom doesn't want us to play football. Okay. So always he wants us to go to school, school, school. But at some point I have to drop out. Okay. You know, because uh, I I'm, I'm, I'm a smart person, but I don't like examination. You know, so anytime it's getting close to exams, then I'll stop the school. <laughs> you've dashed it. You've but, dashed the school but you see, Yeah, but you see, now, now it's very important. As a footballer, because uh, a lot of footballers have fall into victim in terms of their contract and everything. Yeah. Every footballer should be Go educated. Yeah. You need to be educated. You mm. need because previous professional players they've been cheated mm. from people that have been to school, people that read their contracts for them. Some of them have to sign contracts that they don't even know the content yeah. in the in the in the, in, the, in the contract and mm. all that. So, and then they so end up very, cheating. Yeah, them. so so it's very very important for you to educate yourself. Mm. That's why the organization I work with, Right to Dream Academy, is very good mm. in Africa and the world as well. Okay. That's why they are doing so well mm. because it's not only about football; it's about education as well. Oh. So wow. you go to school, you play football, you train, you go to classroom. Mm. When you get into a certain age, you don't get, we see that you don't have football pathway. We take you to America, to the colleges in America or United Kingdom. Okay. So it's very good. You have everything in, in that. But in mm. our time, it's only about football. You, if, you, if you go <laughs> to school, then you won't be able to play football. To play football. That time. It was very difficult to, to miss. But now people have made it very flexible for mm. people to... So, so at some point, your parents just understood that, look, 
this is what he wants to do. So let's leave him alone. Yeah, it got to it got to a, a point because uh, I, I drop out from Amazing Grace. Okay. You know, we are the last people that have to sit common entrance, and then and then and then and then they change to JSS and all this problem. Then I got fed up and I stopped. What? I stopped, stayed <laughs> at home. My mom, I don't even stay at home. I have to run away from home. Go and stay with friends. My mom will come and look for me and all that. So my mom was at home. <laughs> My mom was at home one day and I came with a, 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 a car. I came, I was sitting down with a man, saw me playing. It happened to be the director for uh, Emmett. Okay. Emmett, um, techni it was a technical, technical school. school, yeah. The director over there. Mm -hmm. So he came, he saw me playing and he said, ah, you're a good player. I want you to come to Emmett. Okay. So they gave me scholarship. Wow. They gave me scholarship to come to school. And so your mom was just there, and then you brought the and man. And then I brought the man. I said, oh, this man said he will help me go to school. He said he's the director of MIT uh, Technical School. And, I was like, and then my mom was like, oh, oh, you are done. <laughs> 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 but you used to wear locks. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, when, when I was in the national team playing, sometimes we travel, we go outside Ghana, maybe one month, two months, and sometimes we don't have access to Baba and all that. Okay. So for me, the, the brain behind my dreadlocks is to just keep it. It's easy to keep. And yeah. I did it myself. It's oh. not something that I have to go to saloon, or saloon and then take care of it. So, so that's when I started playing with my hair, started playing with my hair, it became bushy. I okay. started playing with my hair and then it started rolling up. Mm. So with that, it makes it easy for me. I we see. travel and people are looking for where I have to go and to the Baba and mm. all that. Me, I'm solid. I'm, I'm, I'm sorted already. So that's the brain behind. And then people, people like love me for that. People love me for that. And, and, and I kept it like that until mm. I was. I was so so uh, what happened? Why did he take it off? Uh, I, I realized I'm at a different stage in my career. The moment I stopped football and I wanted to coach, I realized I have to have a different look. Okay. You know, people know you as a footballer. Now you are, you are like a leader, you are like a, a, a teacher. So you have to like have a different image. Uh, that's why, that's why I took my, my dreadlocks off. Okay. Like he's thinking, so my guest on PM personality profile. Remember he keeps talking about his wife and he keeps talking about he's a family man. When I return from this break, he'll be telling me about family. And he'll also be telling me about what he believes in. Is he a Christian, Muslim? Buddhist, what does he believe in? We'll be talking about that as well. Plus, his personal interest. You remember he talked about the academy, the football academy. We'll be talking about all of that. And when he retires um, alone and he's in his quiet moment, what does he do? He whispered his favorite song into my ears. He'll be singing a bit of that for us. Stay with me. I'm coming right back. Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight still like King's thing. You can call him Sabato. Sabato, let's talk about your family life. I remember you told me you were going to drop your daughter at school. Um, how's your family life like? Uh, it has been very good. You know, I have a very lovely wife. Uh, she's called Diana Awuku. Okay. Uh, but I put my name there and then put Kingston there. So now okay. she's called Diana Awoku Kingston. I, 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 I made her keep a family name okay. because I have to show respect for, Definitely. for, for, for the family as Definitely. well. So she's Ghana, Diana Awu Kingston. Okay, now, you've, taken the, the you've uh, taken the coup You've taken the coup Make it short, uh, Diana Awu. <laughs> 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 because Kingston have to dominate. You definitely have to <laughs> own her. <laughs> yeah, so okay. yeah, she's been, she been lovely since I met her. She's been very supportive. Actually, uh, there is something that most people doesn't know. She's been my manager throughout my football career. Oh, wow. So every contract I sign, she's the one that will read through the contract and tell me, go and sign it. Nice one. Yeah, and yeah. How many kids? I have four children. Okay. I have a firstborn boy, Jacob. Second boy, Gerald. Mm. Third, Beyonce. Mm. And then fourth, Clinton Scott Kingston. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you also have a Teshi. Beyonce. Do you know I'm, I'm a Beyonce? 
Let, let's talk about your school, the academy. Yeah. Um, what do you do there? Yeah, I'm, I'm the U U18 coach. Okay. Um, so the academy have like different groups. Uh, we bring their kids in, right to Dream Academy, we bring their kids in when they are 9 to 11 years. Mm. So they stayed in, so we have year, year 9, we have women team, we have U 13s, we have U 15s, and then the senior team is U 18s, which is my squad. Okay. Yeah, and all these groups, they have coaches that are assigned to them. Okay. And then at the same time, um, um, a IE coach, IE is International Academy. Mm. We have a club in, in Denmark, FC Nordjylland, okay. that have produced Kamadin, uh, Kudus Mohamed, yeah. and a lot of players that have, have gone through the academy. Okay. They also have academy there. So we have tournaments, international tournaments that we go. We have one in, 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 in Sweden, we have one in Japan, mm. we have uh, some in Italy, okay. and, then, and then all other European countries as well. Mm. So every year we have like three, four tournaments that we go. I'm the coach for uh, International Academy as well. So we bring players from, let's say, U19s as FCN. And then now we've added uh, uh, Academy in Egypt as well. So we bring the Egypt squad, the, the Ghanaian squad, and then a uh, uh, Danish squad mm. to make to form the international academy squad okay. to go and play tournament so mm. that's that, that that's what i do as well okay. wow so um if you had the opportunity to change one thing in ghana football what would that be um that, that's that's <laughs> that's a strong <laughs> question yeah. they're, they're not it won't be just one they but as many. a yeah, but at, as a technical person, I will focus more on the technical part. Okay. If if I have to change something, I would do a lot of education to coaches, mm. because if we have very good coaches in this country, and the coaches are well educated, our football will transform and change for good. So which among your kids is following your steps? Uh, my my firstborn, okay, Jacob, uh, Jacob. he signed for Accra Great Olympics. Okay, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Second round of the of the season. How old is he? He's 23 years old. Oh, now. great. Yeah. Okay, you'll He's be a grandpa Olympics. soon. Um, Are you already I, one? I'm, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> and I don't see him that, but... No so way. when you get, you retire in your quiet moment, um, I know that your body is used to, you know, the everyday stuff, but uh, sometimes every human being take time and be, I mean, alone. I mean, what relaxes you? Uh, music, of course. M music is, you know, my dad always tell me music is food to the soul. To the soul, that's true. Yeah. So, that's so I listen, true. I listen to music a lot. Uh, who, who is your, your favorite uh, artist? I have, I have couple, you know. I have, I have a lot. Uh, some of them I, I was, I'm very close to. Mm. Uh, but, but, but recent times, you know, uh, Kofi Kenata have done very well. You know? Okay. I love, I love his songs that he put up. Uh, uh, the, the, the best one that uh, I listen over and over and over again from mm. Kofi Kenata okay. is, is uh, My Behind is the good. Scenes. Behind the Scenes, yeah. <laughs> is this the one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the song. Yeah, 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 that's the tune. And the punch lines and everything is on point. Do you like it? Do you like it because of the acquaintance with them? <laughs> because it relates to your story. It relates to my Libya story. <laughs> <laughs> it's not everything that I would say, you know? Yeah, it's a nice tune. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, um, I, I love it myself. You know, I, I like Kofi Kinata myself. You know, I like, I like loud songs. Okay. You know, when, when I'm listening to them, I want it loud. Okay. I want people to see that like you're fun. enjoying it. Yes. <laughs> And, and my wife doesn't like that. <laughs> then you should be like, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> but this one, this one, when I'm playing it loud, she, she likes complain. it too. <laughs> she <doesn't complain. laughs> that's the, that's what Kofi Kinata does to people. And the smart, you know, the, the smartness in his lyrics. Yep. You know, yeah. uh, Obiti ob ob Bench is crowd or Jigoki. How you is know, that possible? You know. How can you be on the bench and? And that one is Nyami uh, is God who it's does God, eh? that. <laughs> How can you be on the bench and win the Goki?
for me. Uh, you want to dance for it? When, I, when I'm sitting down, I'm good. Oh, if I really? stand, zero. You can dance. Oh. Let's see. Let's when, see when how I'm it goes. Down, when I'm sitting down, I can move. Hey. <laughs> Get up and let's see whether you can move or not. When I'm sitting down, I'm good at like like this dance. You can't do <laughs> You can't do it when you are standing. No. You <laughs> when I'm sitting down, you can see the Oh really? <laughs> uh, thank you so much, like I've really, really had fun with this interview and I've really also upgraded my knowledge on football talking to you. I'm so grateful that you allowed us into your life and we wish you well in your next endeavor, your coaching business and all the other good things you want for yourself. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. My beautiful dress was made by Little Tread Designs. Call them on 0543196451 or visit their showroom at the 34 West Loop Tessano. My beautiful hair is by Rashmo Hair City. Visit them at Dakuma Nyameche or call them on 055-8266028. Same time next week, God willing, we'll be bringing you another interesting edition of PM Personality Profile. Enjoy the rest of our program. What's up guys, my name is Sammy Forsen, host of the Weekend City Show and Ignition right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Well, anytime you happen to be busy and you miss out on your favorite shows right here on Joy FM, here's what you can do. Log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. Just go on there and you'll find all your shows on demand 24-7. There you can catch up. Remember, Joy FM remains your radio for discerning listeners. Seven.